Good day, I'm going to show you how to play this game, Sushi Go. Your opinion is what keeps us going, so thumbs up if you like the video, and share your thoughts with us by leaving a comment below. This is the detailed tutorial for Sushi Go. Here we'll show you how to play and prepare the game from the moment you pop open the box. We'll also clarify certain rules that are not explained well in the booklet. So if you want a quick idea of the game without going into unnecessary details, I recommend you click on the box and watch our express tutorial instead. It's intended mainly for new players. Now, if you're the one who usually explains games to your friends and you want to know absolutely everything about it, stay tuned. Imagine you're at an Asian restaurant where the food plates go on a conveyor belt like the ones at the airport. You're starving, but you can only grab a plate when it comes within your reach. What's more, your favorite dish may not even be served today. Or, it's possible that someone at the beginning of the belt will grab it before you do. In fact, the cook's a bit absent-minded and completely oblivious to your wishes. He delivers food in three rounds following no order whatsoever. On a single plate, you might get one maki, or two, or three, a dumpling. Dumpling? But that's a ravioli. <sighs> A complete disaster. Perhaps you wanted sashimi, but having just enough time for a quick lunch, you might have to pass on this one and gobble down anything you can. That's the way it is. <laughs> Sushi Go. It's a good, beautiful, and cheap filler for 2-5 to five players. If you want to know more about the game itself, watch our review, which also includes some hacks to improve certain aspects of the game, like scoring cards. We've made a separate video on that in order to keep this one nice and short. Shuffle the cards well. If you don't have a shuffler, do as I'm showing you. Make different piles and mix them up at the end. Take your time to do so. It's essential for the cards to be well shuffled between games. According to the number of players, each player gets 10 cards if there are 2 players, 9 if there are 3, 8 if there are 4, and 7 if there are 5. Three rounds are played, and the player who gets the most points wins. The game follows a draft dynamic seen in games like Seven Wonders. Each player starts with a deck of cards, takes one, and passes on the rest of the deck to another player. In each round of Sushi Go, the following happens. Each player grabs a deck of cards, and without showing them, chooses one card, and places it face down in front of himself. Once all players have done so, at the same time and after counting to three, everyone reveals their card. These cards then stay face up until the end of the round. Once the cards are revealed, the players offer their deck to the players sitting at their left. The whole process is then repeated. When the last card is used, the round is over. After each round, points are added and jotted down. You can use a piece of paper, or you can download these cool scoring cards we've made for you. You have the link at the description below, and more information about their use in our video review. After that, the cards are discarded, and from the original shuffled deck, new cards are drawn. The next round then starts. Remember, three rounds are played. So why pick a certain card instead of another one? These are all the different types of sushi cards in the game. Tempuras, sashimi, dumplings, nigiris, wasabi, maki rolls, pudding, and chopsticks. Tempuras. Shrimp tempuras will get you 5 points for every 2 cards. Having one will not get you any points. You'll need multiples of two to score five points per pair of cards. Sashimi. Sashimi or raw fish are just like the tempuras, but here you'll need groups of three to get 10 points. Unpair cards do not score. Dumplings. Unlike the previous cases, dumplings always score points and don't need to be in multiples of 2 or 3. Now, for each dumpling you grab, you'll accumulate points exponentially. That is, one dumpling gives you one point, 
two dumplings give you three points, three give you six, four give you ten, and five or more dumplings give you fifteen points. Stuffing yourself with dumplings is a good idea. Nigiri. There are three types of nigiri. Egg, which are worth one point. Salmon, which are worth two points. And squid, which are worth three points. You can have as many nigiris as you can eat and even get seconds. Each card will give you the points it has on it. However, if you play a wasabi, this thing that looks like a sick po, and in a later turn place a nigiri on top of it, the value of that nigiri triples. The egg nigiri is now worth three points, the salmon six, and the squid nine points. Once you use a wasabi, you can't reuse it nor change the nigiri on top of it for another one. Like, let's say I played an egg nigiri in a previous turn. Now I get one of squid, which is a better match. So I think to myself, why not switch them? Uh-uh. Well, legally you can't. But if you cheat while no one is watching, I hope you get arisagis from bad sashimi. Something else to explain about the wasabi is that once you play it, the next nigiri you play has to go on the wasabi. You can't play a lousy ed nigiri on the table and leave the wasabi free for when you get a better nigiri. Let's put it this way, if you put some wasabi on your tongue, how many rounds would you last without sticking a nigiri in your mouth? There are three types of maki, cards with one, two or three maki rolls. To get points of the makis, you have to be the first or second player with the most makis. If you have the most when the round is over, you'll get six points. If you are the second to most, you'll get three points. If two or more players tie with the most makis, the six points are divided equally rounding down. Any other player with makis scores zero points. However, if there is one player with the most makis, but two or more players tie in second place, the player with the most gets six points, and the players that tied in second place divide the three points rounding down. Pudding. The puddings are pretty much the same as the maki rolls you need to try to get the highest amount of them possible. Unlike the Makis, here only one player gets points. There's no second place. As a matter of fact, the player with the least puddings, including those with no puddings, loses six points. Puddings are not discarded at the end of each round. They are left on the table throughout the entire game because they only score at the end of the game, not at the end of the rounds. It's a dessert, so it's eaten at the end of the meal. So you'll accumulate puddings between round and round. If you have the most, you'll score 6 points. If you have the least, you'll lose 6 points. If various players tie on the highest or lowest number of puddings, the points are divided rounding down. In the unlikely case that all players have the same number of puddings, nobody receives or loses points. Lastly, the chopsticks. They're a bit different. You can't use them in the turn you place them on the table. In a turn, you place them on the table, and in a later turn, you can use them. This can be on the next turn, or any other turn after that. What it allows you to do is play two cards on that turn, in the order you like. It's done in the following way. So on a previous turn, the sticks were placed on the table, and I also have sashimi in play. As you know, I need three to get 10 points. It happens that the deck of cards I receive has two sashimis in it, and I want to play both. Since my sticks are in play, I bring down my first card, yell out loud, Sushi Go, and then place down my second card. Finally, I return the sticks to the deck of cards that I pass on to the next player. During the next turn, the player I pass the deck to can place the sticks on the table. The order in which the cards are placed down is interesting. Imagine I want to use the sticks to play these two cards a nigiri and a wasabi. I can first play the wasabi and then the nigiri, which would automatically have to be placed on top of the wasabi. Or I could play the nigiri first and then the wasabi, leaving the wasabi free for any future nigiris. I put in play. This is interesting if you know that there are better nigiris still going around. Well, that's it. Enjoy your meal. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Thumbs up if you think we deserved it, and subscribe if you don't want to miss any of our future videos. 
If you want to use the Express tutorial to teach your friends how to play, click on that box. And if you want to know our opinion on the game itself and how to hack some parts, watch our review. Don't forget to download these on the link at the description. All comments, doubts, additions, suggestions are more than welcome. Games on board. We do the reading, you do the playing.